Pause. To start, I'd like to make a request for everyone. Can you raise your right hand? And then cover your right ear. This is to give you an idea how it is to hear a person with just one ear. Because that's me. How with just, yeah, cover your ear or not, it's up to you, but it's awkward, right? That's the idea. If you're always covering your one ear, the sound's always faint or not at all, depending on the location. And if you can't hear something very well, you're not sure if you're hearing it correctly or you're saying the right words correctly. Every time you're talking to a person, there's always a kernel of doubt that is this person understanding me? Is this person, does this person think I'm stupid? Does this person think I'm disabled? Which in fact I am. <clears throat> Tonight's speech, uh, you may put down your hand if anyone still has their hand up. You may put it down. And tonight's speech is about me being deaf, but not just being deaf. It's about how being deaf led into depression. And with depression, I don't have to tell you how hard it is. It's, it's rough. It took me a long while to recover, but that's just not it. My point tonight is to talk about not just the journey, but what I came up with through that journey. What is this thing that I learned through depression? The point is, this person who was like me 13 years ago is different from who I am now. Who I am fails in comparison to that person because I came out stronger than I was then. <clears throat> being depressed is like being in a forge. It breaks you down, it builds you up, it makes you into something new. And being depressed, I learned two things, make it three, which is truth, selfishness, and patience. These are three of my core philosophies that I learned since being depressed, and I want to share them tonight with you. 13 years ago, I was diagnosed as a codependent. What does a codependent mean? A codependent is someone who doesn't understand himself, someone who can't love himself, someone who needs other people's validation and affection to feel something, to feel the hole in your heart. And that was me. I had problems and I covered it up by helping other people. By helping other people, I would find validation. I would find someone else who loves me. And I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Until one day, I met a professor. I think you know him. Do you know Sir Sammy? No, not anymore. Okay. Uh, I met a professor and he has this weird test. Every, when you go into this class, he asks you to draw a house, a tree, and yourself. And at the time, I thought of myself as very creative, arts-wise. I made a drawing. He was, it made a really good impression on him. He asked to see me after class. And he told me I had a, I had a big problem. <clears throat> he told me I was codependent. And he was willing to put in time to help me. At first, I felt offended. I felt perfectly fine. Why would this person intrude in my life and ask, you need help? And he was very persistent. <clears throat> the more time he put in, the more I realized, damn it, something is wrong. And it took a while, but he talked me through it and it was, again, very rough. And from that journey, I learned three things. The first, which is the truth. There are a lot of lies we tell ourselves. One of those lies is, I am going to go on a diet 
tomorrow. <laughs> I am going to wake up early to jog before work. I'm going to attend Toastmasters every week, always, which not, not really never really happens. For me, my lie was I had issues and I was a seething cup of anger and sadness and insecurity that I didn't want to acknowledge. I didn't want to acknowledge this because it was painful. And what I did was, again, I helped other people. I kept moving and focused on other things. I masked the pain with other people's acceptance of me, but it wasn't really gonna work. I realized it was never gonna work when one night, I was doing my college thesis. I was gonna sit in front of the computer, boot it up. Before the computer really opened, I started crying. I didn't understand why. I thought everything was okay. Why are you crying? Uh, it kept happening every night, and it really hurt me. It really hit home that something is wrong. And I was then I realized I had problems. I was running away from them. And the lesson I learned was, if you have problems, you have to face them. If you have mistakes, you have to own them because no one else is going to own them for you. Facing problems is how you grow up. The more your obstacles you overcome, the more you grow, the more you mature. And that's why for me, Overcoming your own problems, your own responsibilities, is the hallmark of being a mature person. So if you want to be mature, you have to be truthful to yourself and accept your flaws and wants and all. My second lesson, aside from truth, is selfishness. I told you I like to help people. The reason why you want to help people is helping people acknowledges you it gives me an emotional high it gives me a shot much like an addiction that I matter it came to a point that not all people are nice some people will abuse your goodwill for me I didn't care people wanted it I gave it I got my addiction it's fine and that's why and that's why what happened was what I told you a while ago I kept crying I didn't understand what's wrong you know what I decided to myself from now on I'm gonna be selfish I am going to think about myself first and not other people. But still, there are people who deserve help. But, you know, I'm going to take care of myself first, make sure I am cared for, and when I'm going to help people, I'm not going to burn myself out. And my last point is patience. Aside from helping other people, I've made a lot of mistakes. Mistakes I tally and recite every night and hate myself for it because I always thought I was stupid. And I realized that we all hold ourselves to very high ideals and we punish ourselves more than we punish other people for failing those ideals. What we need is to be our own best friend. We need someone who's not afraid to call out on your bullshit someone who's gonna pick you up when you fall and say you're gonna make it give you someone who will give you bottomless patience bottomless encouragement <clears throat> and no one's going to do that for you you have to do it for yourself <clears throat> being depressed is like being in a forge when i started i was a flawed material i was wanting I would be tough, but under pressure, I would crack. Now, 
I am just as tough. Didn't didn't really change, but under pressure, I bend. And when I bend, that means I can come back. And in met metallurgy, it's called malleability. And being malleable is fine because one thing about depression, it never really leaves you. As much as I want to say it's gone, it's still there at the back of my mind. In fact, when I tried to do this speech, I told you, I'm going to do this next meeting. That was four weeks ago. <laughs> so why did it take me two weeks? Because I had to revisit everything. It's painful. There are scars. I, got, I had to scab the wound, see how far I've gone. And I'm glad to say I've gone far enough, I think. I did this speech, revised it three times because I wanted to tell a long story, didn't really pan out. I, I got to this form by the fourth iteration. In between each iteration, I still procrastinated. It's still painful. But now here I am. My 10th speech is done, my graduation speech is done. I'm happy to end the year on a high note. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to, um, if you see me procrastinate anytime, feel free to kick my ass. Thank you. <laughs>